Hello. Hi. Hello, hello, hello. What's up, you all? How y'all doing, sexy people? How y'all doing, sexy people? I wanted to get on this live because um, I wanted to talk to my people. I'm coming back from... Shout out to Stacey J. Johnson. If you guys are not following my friend Stacey J. Johnson, she just got an honorary doctorate today. So I went to her graduation and it was absolutely beautiful. Um, I love my Stacey J. We've been friends for shit. Feel like damn near 30 years since we were in California. Um, so I don't know if you guys are following her, but her, her, uh, her name on Instagram is at uh, Just Date Girl. So she is a love and relationships expert. And she is the bomb.com. So I'm trying to pull this up, you guys, because y'all are a little far from me. I didn't want to hold my phone, so it's a little far back. But um, I just wanted to talk to y'all a little bit. I um sorry, I'm a little distracted. How do I? I think I can do it this way. I want to be able to see any of your questions and comments. Okay, boom. Hi. All right, cool. I can see the comments and stuff on my other phone. So I don't have to squint so much to see y'all here. But first of all, I hope you guys are having a wonderful, what is today? Saturday night. It is definitely a rainy night in Georgia, but um, it's a beautiful night nonetheless. It's cooled off. It's been really, really hot in Georgia here lately. So, um... I'm grateful that we got a little bit of cool, cooler temperatures because it's been hot as hell. Like H E double L hot. Um, but I wanted to jump on here because I was having a conversation with my husband tonight. And, you know, I was just kind of sharing with him what a wonderful afternoon and early evening I had celebrating Stacey getting her honorary doctorate. Um, showing up for the people who show up for you. Very important. Um, and we were just talking about the lessons because, you know, of course, I mentioned to him also that somebody reached out to me about the R&B Divas post that I posted and wanted to know, you know, what I thought about some of the feedback that I was getting from the R&B Divas post that I posted, which is the post, I think the last post I posted. And, you know, it's interesting because the subject of R&B divas always brings up this, like, it makes me feel really proud on the one hand. Um, and then it makes me feel really sad on the other hand, because I feel like it was such an amazing show, right? And just when you think people kind of forgot about it and you think people were just like, R&B divas, whatever, some bullshit, whatever. whatever. Y'all was fighting. Yeah, you and Selena, you and this. But just when you think, you know, it's like old news or people ain't really thinking about it. You post something like I posted the other day and you see that people did really enjoy the show. And people really felt like they were shortchanged a little bit because we were developing a really solid fan base for the show, right? And I also feel like it's important to be, you know, very transparent and clear because sometimes we post things and, you know, you just kind of, I'm really guilty of it. I'll be posting some shit and like, you know, saying what I got to say. And then, you know, you look back at it and then like certain people are reading certain things into the post and, you know, certain things you leave out or you should have put a period where a comma was because, you know, then this makes more sense said this way, whatever. So I want to clear a couple of things up. And I'm usually not the person who gets, you know, on social media and feels like I have to clear something up or justify you know, something that I said, but I'm going to do it this time because I think it's important for people to be clear, especially in this case. So a number of people have asked me, let me take a little sippy sip first. Mm. First thing I want to clear up, y'all, this is actually a dress. It's looking kind of young. Sorry. Thing one I want to clear up. This is not about the Encore show on BET and Carlos King. My post 
had absolutely nothing to do with the encore show, BET or Carlos King. I think that show is good. I think that it's about time women in R&B music are back on TV, um, showing how dope we are. Um, I think, you know, yeah, there's some similarities indeed, but I don't, that wasn't what I was referring to. So I kind of responded to a few people and um, let them know that, but I feel like I should really be big girl draws, literally, and be very transparent about that. Um, I love my BET family. Um, I, it's dope that BET was smart enough to realize the opportunity and really put, you know, artists back in that space where you're seeing women work towards a goal, a common goal, especially women that we loved. And, you know, we watched, you know, in the past make really dope records and great music. I wish every last one of the women on that show well. I, in fact, did a promo for the show. So just so we clear on that. No ill intent, no finger pointing, no, oh, that was R&B Divas. I wasn't even coming from that space. Um, but I do think it's important to also be transparent about the space in which I was coming from. And I've said it a few times. And I'm going to continue to say it. The reason I feel that I was bullied out of the show is because... And anybody connected to the show <laughs> who's, you know, going to be transparent and straight up and say what really had happened was I really was in a fight with the other producers about the depictions and the focus on us having drama and the focus on us beefing with each other. And sometimes a lot of what people saw on the show wasn't just me being super bitch. Although, you know, I got a side when I need to get something done. I'm not exactly soft and sweet about it. I'm fair about it, but I'm not, you know, whispering at all. Cause I don't think I should have to, especially as the person who created the show and cast the show and created the sizzle reel that got the show picked up. And I wasn't, it wasn't just a thought or an idea that I had like, Hmm, we should do a show about, no, I actively pursued all of the talent, LA, Atlanta, all of them heard from me first. And we used every resource, my husband and I, every resource we had, everything we could borrow from whomever to fly people down and put people up and really put this show together. It was actually Soul Kittens Cabaret that is a play that I wrote while I was on tour with Tyler Perry that sort of launched and springboarded this R&B Divas thing. Soul Kittens Cabaret, Selena Johnson, Angie Stone, Monifa, like a lot of the faith, a lot of the women that you know from R&B Divas were part of the Soul Kittens Cabaret brand. And in Soul Kittens Cabaret, for those of you who don't know, we were like documenting the making of. We were showing how we lived in this house and how we were going to get back on our feet. Trinise, you know, Tatiana Ali, I've said it before, really amazing women have blessed me in these ideas and production and stuff. But Soul Kittens Cabaret gave birth to R&B Divas. R&B Divas, we pitched. Now, let me let me give y'all some clarity, clarity on how the whole thing went down as far as Phil Thornton and Think Factory and all of that stuff, right? This is the truth. I don't care what nobody else tells you. This is the truth, right? So we did this sizzle reel. Um, and even there's an article that somebody sent me recently where even Selena was doing an interview for like Soul Train or something. And, you know, before everybody knew what was going on with the show, she was like, yeah, Nikki did this all by herself. This is Nikki's idea. This is Nikki's show. So, so it's been in print from all of the ladies, right? Uh, but back to how we got connected to Think Factory and Phil and TV One, because I like it to be clear. I'm not trying to, first, let me, let me issue this disclaimer first. I'm not trying to offend anybody. I'm not trying to disrespect anybody. I'm not trying to shade anybody. We're all way too grown for that. But what I am doing is I'm sharing the truth of my situation and what I experienced in hopes that this somehow empowers, inspires, educates, and informs not just people who are fans of the show, but the next 
woman who comes up with a really dope idea and she doesn't believe she has the resources or the relationships or the tools that are required to get that idea sold, to get that, to still own a piece of that idea. Because the mistake I made was about ownership. So this is about sharing my story, not to be shady, to actually spread the love and the knowledge so we can finally start getting real reparations in this television, film, and music industry, which is where it really needs to be going down. But anyway, I digress. So did the sizzle reel. Had talked to Tweet, had talked to, you know, everybody. Most people will tell you, Nikki, yeah, she bugged us to death about trying to be on this show. So, you know, hired a crew, edited the sizzle reel initially myself. Me and my husband stayed up for like five days. I ain't know shit about editing, but I was like, listen, I am going to get this done. Flew people down. I was riding around helping Selena find a house. She, hey, you can stay with me. You know, she was, in, you know, pumping literally because she had just had her baby so that she could freeze the milk like we were hustling mo everybody was hustling angie everybody um so faith we realized that we needed an anchor we realized that you know i had actually pitched to some people not really knowing how to pitch because i was a music person right i don't know shit about tv i'm a music girl this is some music stuff it's about a music show the idea is brilliant somebody's gonna understand it and help me execute this. I didn't think they was going to understand it and manipulate and take it from me. I thought they was going to understand it and help me learn. But, you know, we got to make those mistakes in order to share those lessons. Anyway, um, reached out to Faith. I'm like, look, I know you just did Soul Kids Cabaret. I know, friend, I know you're tired of be calling, be asking. You be calling, you asking you for favors and shit. But I need your help. I need to know if you will be the anchor for this series. I need to know if you can help us pitch this thing and, you know, put your name behind it. And really, she was like, yep, I'll do it. Just like she always does. I believe in it. I think it's a dope idea. I think we could tweak a few things here and there. So my girl Faith came on board and um, became the anchor. The, the reason why people paid attention to the show and ultimately picked up R&B Divas. If y'all just coming into the conversation... You have to rewatch the live because I'm talking about the whole R&B divas and, you know, the fact that this mess, this post I made was not about Carlos King. I think he's dope. He's also from Detroit. I wish that show the best. Uh, BT, my family. Anyway, um, Faith came to me and said one day, hey, Nikki, her manager at the time was Phil Thornton, right? Faith said, Nikki, I think we, I talked to my friend Phil, my manager Phil, and Phil thinks that he has a company, a production company that will come on board and help, you know, us pitch the show and for it to be taken seriously. This is long before the whole movement and push for black women content creators to be lifted and supported. And this really your shit. So we're going to really give you credit for your shit and not we're going to take your shit. But that, there I go getting ratchet. I'm going to calm my nerves a little bit. Hold on. I know it's a long story, but I'm getting to it. So, Phil Thornton, who I did not know, but he managed Faith. And I said, if he manages Faith, that's good enough for me. So, Phil Thornton introduced us to Think Factory. Think Factory said, hey, we TV's interested in this show. They, you know, they would, they're, they need, they love the musical series idea. Woo, 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 woo. You know, we want to pitch it, but in order for us to pitch it, Y'all basically have to sign a deal that says that we, could, we could pitch it and we could pitch it for X amount of time. So for you young producers out there, like back in the day when we needed a whole bunch of extra camera shit, we needed like a whole like five, you know, editing bays and all that kind of stuff to really make great content and TV or so we thought. This is, you know, almost 10 years ago. So naturally I'm like, okay, these are big boys. They're more experienced. They had done, um... I don't know, it wasn't a ton of reality TV, but they had done some reality TV. So I was like, okay, well, cool. So I was told by legal, I let, you know, you know, the, the, the lawyers that were more versed in these contracts, negotiate our contracts, because I, of course, remember was coming from the music world. And in the negotiation of that contract, it was basically negotiated the way that contracts were negotiated then, like kind of like in the music industry back in the day, you either sign this contract because this is what the standard agreement is and or you just don't get the deal. Somebody else behind you willing to do it. So a lot of times artists say, okay, cool, we'll sign this contract as long as we're in it for the entire 
show and the history of the show and all that stuff, it's all good. Well, we signed this contract and the contract basically says we're in it. So we'll always get paid from it as a producer salary, which was negotiated, which, you know, y'all know this reality TV stories is not great. But then it became something that went from me and Faith doing this and doing it, you know, he was managing her. So, you know, he, he would benefit from his client getting a show picked up to now it needs to be Nikki Faith, Phil, his partner, Paul. This person at Think Factory, this person at Think Factory, and then this person and this person. So y'all see something that I brought that was pretty much fully cast, fully produced. They used the same sizzle reel and the same footage that my husband and I paid for, which we didn't get paid back for, to actually put the show, to sell the show to the network. Ultimately, they sold it to TV One. When they sold it to TV One, it was one of those things where like, hey, you know, we're sort of the kings of the hill here. We're going to involve you ladies, but at the end of the day, our company makes all the, the big decisions, right? So we're like, cool. And initially I was going to fall back and not be on the show, which a lot of people don't know that either, because I said I wanted to be taken seriously as a producer. But of course, I was told, oh no, you'll get to see everything. It won't show you in a negative light. I was like, I really want to be taken seriously as a content creator and a producer. I don't want to be on camera and not being taken seriously. This was a whole thing back and forth, but... Long and short, I decided I'll be on the show, which wasn't a bad decision. They showed us the first three episodes. Oh, this is what this is. A show that empowers women, that shows us in our daily lives, working and grinding and launching our businesses. And like in the clip I posted where I said I didn't want to sing, I had done that. I had been burned by the industry. I knew that there was no real long-term wealth opportunities as much as some people will tell you different in the music industry is just not any real long-term wealth opportunities unless you get people on your team who really give a shit about your future and your legacy. And most people in this industry don't give a shit. But I knew based on seeing Tyler's success and based on seeing the success of some other people that getting into television and film would definitely be something that would help me grow my legacy, grow my brand, build my Carvato plus size clothing line business. I had it all together, or at least so I thought figured out in my head. I made a promise to God when we got picked up. Lord, the minute it starts to turn into some crazy stuff, I'm walking. No matter how much money they pay me, if you get us this, I made a deal with the Lord, y'all. I said, if you get us this opportunity, because we knew TV One was interested, they were testing it, we will not go that route. When you look at all of the beginning press and how we handled ourselves and, you know, the things that we did and the size of the buses and the diva-like behavior in a positive way in the first season. That's what that show was about. It was drama. I got a little ratchet here and there, you know, some moments that were embellished. But that was cool, right? Except for at the end of season one. I kind of saw like there was this whole article, Nikki Gilbert is a terror to work with, this Radar Online thing, because I was constantly in their asses about constant having drinking on set. I'm sorry, speaking of drinking on set. Excuse me. Constantly having drinking on set. Um, I was in their asses about, you know, putting the battery in the back of somebody who felt like they needed to do something to be more visible or more popular or more in, the, you know, and it's funny, I was watching an interview with Nene and um, I just think she's just evolved into such a, you know, that's a whole nother conversation. I just, I really can appreciate what she's evolved into because I was watching this interview and I'm like, yeah, yeah, that part, exactly. And she's just so like, don't say too much, say just enough and tells the truth and shames the devil. And that's not easy. And the big thing that happens in these situations is they start to manipulate people who want to be in a certain space or be considered a certain way. And they're like giving them, you know, incentive, you know what I mean? And then it started to turn into that. So when I saw that happening and then I saw this accidental email that basically said it was accidental, but I got the email that basically said that, that, you know, in a nutshell, me and Selena were not supposed to be friends. They didn't want to, you know, like it was an opportunity for us to go and talk to someone together. I'm not going to say who it is, you know, but we, you know, we got an invitation for somebody to come and kind of 
smooth out the wrinkles in our relationship because, you know, season one, you saw it kind of brewing, right? They said, no, we don't want them to do that for a lot of reasons. But one of the reasons was we don't need Nikki and Selena working out their issues over there. That's, you know, in black and white. Now, I'm not saying who, so I'm not breaching anything. And if I am, oh, well, shit. Oh, well. Back to the story. So we never worked through some of the issues that were lingering from season one, right? So I got a call because I basically decided that I wasn't going to return as a full-time cast member after season two. A lot of people don't know that. But I was like, eh, I'm cool because I see what's going on and I really need to see more of like what's going on. I remember, you know, Faith and I fought really hard for Phil and Paul to be able to get earpieces so that they could actually communicate and see what was going on. Because in that first season, I was of the belief that they had everybody's back. And they had all of our good intentions. So we literally fought for them to be able to have the respect from the other company that they brought on board so that they could be more in the know of what was going on because we thought, hey, they looking out for us. <sighs> Naivety, naive, whatever you call it. So I'm getting to the end of this long story, but I feel like I just have to say it. All right, um, babe, I'm live if that's you at my door. Um, so we go into season two. But before we go into season two, I'm like, oh, the success of Carvado in season one. Oh, this is what happened. Okay, I left this out. This is a very important part. Very, very important part. So after I did full figure fashion week for Carvado, which was my plus size clothing line I launched on the show for all you youngins who don't know nothing about this show. After I did full uh, plus size full figure fashion week, I got a lot of really awesome, incredible feedback from designers. Now, this was before Curvy was a thing. If y'all can believe that, like it was plus sized, you know, but Curvy's now a very big thing. But before Curvy was such a big thing, I got a, um, I offered to have conversations with a very, very big brand that I will not name. Um, they saw my stuff in Full Figure Fashion Week, Essence Magazine, posted pictures like, oh my God, it's great. Mary Claire, Marie Claire at the time, these were called magazines, y'all. They had these back in the day, 10 years ago. Um, and they were just like, oh, it's great. It's wonderful. So I'm on a high. So I take every dollar that I've been, that I've received pretty much and I'm putting it in the clothing line and putting it into the marketing and putting it into the website and putting it into material putting it into seamstresses I don't know what the hell I'm doing I'm just losing money because I don't know what the hell I'm doing and ain't nobody never really taught me how to be an entrepreneur I done created a tv show launched a clothing line that surprisingly worked and now I'm just go all of a sudden be an entrepreneur not knowing shit about no I'm lying my mother was an entrepreneur but the the y'all know what I'm saying like how to really run a business I didn't have that education um so i put everything into it i had this big call i was preparing for i got invited to all these other fashion shows i was like oh i want to do a plus size model sh search show i want to do this show centered around loving me and women's empowerment i want to you know empowerment empowerment power how about the article comes out on deadline and it's still out there nikki gilbert a horror and a terror to work with. Producers are getting rid of her and replacing her with someone else. They're still going to have her as a producer, but you know she's too ratchet and terrible to be on camera. So we're going to get rid of her ass. This is Radar Online, which you might not be familiar with it, but it's some serious shit. Mainstream, big deal. Came out a day or two, I think the day before my call. And I called the network and I was like, oh my God, I got a really big call with the head of the company that would put my clothes in all of the stores. And this article came out. TV One, who I have no issues with, issued a retraction of that article and said I was a model person to work with, you know, they're looking forward to season two. You know, it's all out there. You guys can see all of it out there in social media land. And I got on the call the next day and those people were as nice as they could possibly be and as quick as they could possibly be. And the, all I remember hearing was, we love your line. We think it's awesome. We really want to get into this space, but we've done some, you know, researching and, you know, you're new and you're young. And there's a lot going on. So we're going to look back and maybe revisit this in a year or so. And all I heard was they fucking saw that article. 
and I found out later that they did, broke me completely down. And then, you know, there was the whole, okay, well, anyway. So I, I, I said, you know what? I'm going to put this dress shop together. We're going to invest all these resources into this business at least next season with a limited appearance. No, what I said was I wasn't going to do it. They flew me down, basically said, if you don't come back this season, this is a wrap. We can't, we're not going to continue. You know, we knew Faith was leaving. They were like, if you don't come back, you it's just a so the condition of me coming back was I will come back if the focus is my clothing line, my entrepreneurship, and this tour that I've got a Live Nation promoter on board for, who pays on time, who works with some of the biggest names in the industry. He's on board. He wants to work with Radio 1, TV 1. We want to put this tour together. This is before I committed to the second season of R&B Divas. They said, we agree. No problem. I said, and the other thing is, there's a person that works on the staff, on the ground with us. That person, cannot, I can't deal with that person. Because not only do I have an issue with that person, if everybody on the show is straightforward and honest with you, everybody did. And anybody connected with R&B Divas knows exactly the person that I'm talking about. And that person, they're, oh, yeah, we've heard complaints from that person. The network even called me and was like, hey, we've heard some complaints about this person, too. What do you think? I think those complaints are right. I think you're absolutely correct. And that person was supposed to not be connected to the show. We'll shake on it. Good. Okay, I'll do the show. The very first day of filming, what do I discover? I discover, number one, that the person that was I was told was not going to be connected, that nobody was good with, wasn't on the ground. He'd actually been promoted to the company and had, you know, control over everything, as my daddy would say. So, yeah, they kept the part of the promise that was we wasn't going to have him on the ground, you know, fucking with y'all. But we're going to promote him. And he's going to see it all and control it all and wizard it all. So, it's like, okay, this is what we're doing? Cool. Y'all want to piss me off? I'm not going to let it happen. Not going to be reactive, going to be proactive. Let's go. First day of filming. Some of y'all might have heard this story before. If you heard it, stick with me. If you haven't, here you go. The infamous scene where I was kicked out of Selena's house. I was told to eat 10 bags of you-know-what. And I was get to stepping and all that shit. I sat in a Starbucks for almost three hours before I got to her house, not knowing where I was going because it was like, oh, we don't want to tell you it's a surprise. After about three hours, I was like, look, y'all, I've been here for three hours. I'm about to roll out. No, 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 no. We're going to take you now. We're going to take you now. But we want you to leave your car here. We're going to take you in the van because, you know, Nikki, you get up and you leave a scene. Anybody who watched season one, Norma Desmond was my middle name, baby. I'm not going to sit here and argue with no to the body. I'm going to leave. So because I was getting up leaving, this was sort of the entrapment. But see, I'm a thinker. Joaquin. Chi-Chi, follow this truck. <laughs> so they follow behind me. I don't know where I'm going, but it don't feel right. Pull up to this home that I've never been to. They like, oh, okay. So this is Selena's house. And I'm like, oh, well, you don't have to go in. We'll just tell her you came and you decide. No, 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 no. I see what y'all doing. It's cool. It's cool. I'm going to go in Selena's house. It's cool. I'm not going to be disrespectful. She cooked again dinner. I get in this lady's house three hours late of no fault of my own. And when I walk in the door, yeah, I was a little tight because I felt a little tricked, especially when I walked in and saw that all the food had been eaten. They pretty much was wrapping up. I was coming at the end of the scene. And when I was told to sit in a child's chair at an adult counter, I already knew, okay, this is where we going with this. This got me and Selena got to be two bulls in a china shop. We got to be. Here you go. But I'm not going to do it. When I felt like I needed to defend myself, when y'all heard us arguing about the tour in the very first episode of the second season, it was because the only people who knew that I had this tour lined up and I wanted to let the ladies know that we booked a tour and we booked a very reputable promoter, reputable promoter, and it was AEG and Faith was on board and I was on board and that was the whole reason of us coming together to do this show that I invited y'all to do in the first place. The fact that I walked in there and Selena's sister announced a tour 
just, I was like, here we all the way go with this bullshit. So now we got to have competing tours. And one thing led to another, you know, that's when Monifa told me Selena mushed her. And, you know, Selena was like, I didn't mush you. And I was like, yeah, you mushed her. And it was a whole thing and all this other trivial childish shit. But that set the tone for the season. Now, I'm not going to go through and break down every episode. But I need y'all to be clear. What set the tone for the destruction of r Divas was the idea that I was a problem. And I was a problem because I wanted us to do a show about making music, the drama behind our lives, the, 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 the ebb and the flow, the being broke, trying to get it together, the, the struggles I had with my voice, which were genuine, organic struggles, real shit I was insecure about, the things that Selena had to deal with being underrated, the things Mo had to deal with with her sexuality, like all of these really powerful kiki and being called crazy and just all of this was the show that could have changed the entire landscape of R&B music. This is a show that we should have, could have, would have been in 10, 15 seasons in with everybody working and everybody's brands winning. The same shit that happens with the Kardashians and the housewives. We could have been, and I feel like I have to share this truth with y'all because you are such, I, when I look at over 30,000 people looking at this post and all the positive comments and people feeling like they've been shortchanged because of R&B divas, I feel like it's important. And I don't think I've ever really been as transparent as I am. I've given bits and pieces to people because I'm just not going to lie and bullshit nobody. I'm just going to tell you what it is. But, um... So that whole season was a battle of tours. They actually went and put out a booking announcement with our pictures on it and R&B Divas going on tour without me and Faith knowing it. We had no idea that we were being sold to promoters without our knowledge just to create beef and issues. The promoter that actually agreed to promote it with AEG and those people were pissed because they're like, wait a minute, you told us that this was what this was going to be. Then all of a sudden it was a battle of they tour versus your tour. And you're trying to take food out. And it was just a mess. And whether or not Selena or her sister at the time, let me say this in all fairness, whether or not they knew that I had already talked to them about a tour and one of the conditions of me coming back to the show for the second season, which was the second season was over. It was done. <laughs> If I didn't come back. And that's what I was told by the big people at the big house and the big that make all the decisions. So they could have been bullshitting me to make me come back. But that's what I was told that it was not coming back. And I made the decision based on the opportunities that this could provide for all of us. It wasn't a selfish decision at all. And I don't believe this that they were aware because I didn't tell them that. I didn't go in and hang out. Only reason why the show coming back is because of me. No, that's dumb. We grown. It's coming back because of all of us. And let me be clear. What made R&B Divas a hit is not me by any means, but I did come up with the idea. I did cast the show. I did shoot the sizzle reel and edit the sizzle reel and spend all kind of money we did not have putting the show together and was told in the end, it doesn't say when we have to pay you. So since you quitting, because after the gun was put on my husband, which I'm not going to get into all of that, but yes, a gun was pulled on my husband in the last episode. And after that humiliating, awful brownstone performance, which y'all have no idea all the shit that went down in that situation. We were waiting at a venue with no air from six o'clock in the morning and our performance didn't happen until almost 11 because of all of these air conditioning breaking and shit not working and us being crammed into a small room and me screaming to people, you know, about the fashion stuff and then going on stage and really trying to perform hot, sweaty, stressed out, friends waiting for hours. You know, it was a it was a horrible performance. It was humiliating and this was supposed to be the thing that was going to bring this group back. And when that happened, I wasn't going to come for the final dinner. And I said, you know what? I'm a team player. And also, what y'all don't know, is part of the reason why things were so chaotic was because all of the ladies agreed that we we worked, we partnered with an organization called the Center for Black Women's Wellness, right? Which was a charitable organization. So the whole like me trying to get charity for the foundation and didn't have 501c3 was some BS because we take the whole day 
with the Center for Black Women's Wellness, real women with real issues, a woman who's in her 60s whose husband brought home HIV, a little girl who was like 14 years old who had been raped and molested, I can't say the R word, but molested and abused. And we wanted to make 20 women over and give them Carvado clothes and let them get made over and walk while each lady performed. And all I asked those women to do was provide hair and makeup artists, their glam squad, to do two women. Nobody, at the last minute, everybody pulled out. So I was stuck trying to manage <laughs> making over these women with little to no resources. Because the good joke was, oh, we can't do it. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't do it. Oh, I can't be connected to a charity that. So after that whole fiasco with Brownstone, and shout out to my sisters, Maxie and Tisha, and everybody who stood there. And Maxie and Tisha, which y'all don't know, they're curling hair, changing clothes for people, helping people get ready. They're doing all of this. And this is our debut performance because everybody else sold us out. Um, but we didn't see that. We just saw me being a mad woman backstage and all kinds of disasters. But I digress. The last day of filming was the very next day. My husband said, you're tired. You had a horrible showing. I know that was, Maxie broke down crying outside because she knew she hit the note. She was like, Nikki, that was terrible. Please tell them not to show it. And guess what? I was truthful with her. Kiever, uh, Kiki's brother was holding her. I said, they're going to show it. And they probably going to repeat it. And they probably going to double dub it and remix it. And they're going to send it to all the blogs. And they're going to destroy or work to destroy any possibility of people taking us seriously in this industry because of that performance. That's just what they're going to do, sister. I'm sorry. And, of course, that's what they did. Um, she was broken. She posted something like, I want to crawl into a hole and die. But at that point... I had decided I'm done. So we have this dinner. I show up to this dinner because it was, I think it was either Moe's birthday. It was something. And I just knew it was going to go bad. My spirit just told me this is going to go bad. This is, this is not going to be good because it's just not going to be good. Well, sitting there having dinner. Angie and Latasha, or Kiki and Latasha get into it. Then Angie and Kiki get into it. And then everybody's getting into it at the table. Y'all seen the famous scene, SpongeBob. Black Gums, Man, Bobby Brown, all that shit. Um, it was just so toxic and dark. And it was like almost the kicking under the table moment in there. And I'm like, I'm going to hold my teacup, which I held the entire time. I didn't get up. I didn't get loud. I said a few things I probably shouldn't have said in hindsight. Selena has apologized for the things she said. But that toxic, awful moment that everybody thinks is so dope and so funny and so shady. Cheers, if that's the shit you find funny. But that moment is what sealed the coffin on R&B Divas. Because I was like, yeah, I'm done. And I don't care if this motherfucker goes down in flames. I'm not coming back. And on the way out the door, before we even left the door, I see the producers running. And one of them is crying and somebody's like, oh, they called the police. I'm like, what's going on? And they're pointing to Latasha and like, come, 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 come. And then they start pointing to me and they're like, you need to come, come, come. My husband never shows up on set. I don't have a reality TV husband. I have a military man who is not about the bullshit and not about this life and not about this industry. He came because he knew how broken I was from that brownstone performance, how stressed I was. I couldn't even talk. I'm hoarse. That's why I was sipping on tea, y'all. And he's sitting at the bar. And I guess Selena went downstairs and said some things and there was this whole exchange and she was still angry from cussing me out, Godzilla and all that stuff. And I called her Godzilla, whatever it was. And she went out into the, the parking lot and then there was an exchange. I don't know what, why I wasn't there, so I'm not gonna repeat what it was, but whatever it was, it ended with um, one of the cast members' husbands deciding, my, they said something to my husband and my husband was like, you know what, fuck y'all, fuck this or something, I don't know. And then guns, a gun was pulled. And I went downstairs and I was like, what's going on? What's going on? And I stood there and I stood face to face with the guy. And he was like, I'm sorry. I ain't gonna fight him. I had to shoot him. And I lost my mind. Like this is R&B divas. And I could have came down here to my husband bleeding to death in the middle of a parking lot. Because of some bullshit. It was over. So, 
we get off this live, I feel like I've been very transparent. Um, and I feel like I have finally said what a lot of people have wondered, you know, the reason the show ended was because it became a toxic, awful, terrible situation, largely based on misunderstandings, ego, and forgetting where we came from. Forgetting what the premise and the, and the foundation of this show was about. Forgetting, losing ourselves in effort to fit into this stereotype for ratings. People you brought on board saying, well, you know, it's got to be exciting. If it's, if it's not exciting, you know, uh, we, it's not going to come back. And when you got kids to feed and you got bills to pay and that money is like, money that you haven't seen in a long time. And it's no different than what happened with LA. It's no different than what happens with all of the shows. People start to come in and bring random people who are fascinated with the idea of being on television who will do anything for it. Um, and they really destroy really good things. And I'm gonna say this, these hair care lines that are out here that are just winning and doing so great, Mayel and uh, Main Choice, if they switched up their formula if they started taking ingredients out, if Coca-Cola took out ingredients, if any product that fans loved and supported just decided they was just going to start changing the original formula and, and switching around cast members, it never works when you deviate from what we were ordered by the universe, by God, to do. As good as the show got, it'll never be as good as that first season. And any show that comes around, and this is not shade to Carlos King because I'm glad they're doing it and I hope they do it better. And I hope that it gives a lot of women in music an opportunity that we all need because COVID has been a bitch on all of us. But anything out there, I can say, was not as good, did not have the potential of the first season of R&B Divas. Period. The originals. And I would love to do the show. I would love to see all of the women on the show heal. I would love to see us build. I would love to see the raw, real, honest, real shit. But if that is something that we can't do and own the narrative for and control the narrative for, I'll never do it. Period. And that's a shame because people deserve good TV like Army Divas. Oh, y'all got me here sweating. So I'm probably going to hear from some folks. I got a really great team of lawyers, so I don't really give a shit. They're expensive, and I might have to get out here and sing at some birthday parties and some picnics because I got some other stuff going on. But that's the other thing. The other thing I want to say, and I'm about to get out of here, and this is really important. Like, this is so fucking important for people to realize. <sighs> Stop stealing people's shit. Stop taking people's creative intellectual properties, their songs, their musicals, their TV shows. Stop taking people's shit, trying to pawn it off as yours. Because I promise you on everything, Whoopi Goldberg in the color purple. It's never going to flourish long term. It's never going to flourish long term. It will not flourish long term if you steal it from the person who gave birth to it. If you rearrange, reimagine, whatever the fuck you call it, an intellectual property that does not belong to you without the creator's permission and consent and approval, it's never going to flourish. It's never going to thrive. Build partnerships with these people. You can't take the soul and the heart out of something. Real Housewives? <laughs> Nene Leakes had a lot of soul and heart in that franchise. No shades of nobody who's attached to it, but I'm just saying. Married to Medicine? Mariah Huck? Whatever it is, whoever it is, whatever show, musical, play, whatever it is out there in these streets. Stop stealing from people. Stop stealing their streams. Stop stealing their creative in because you're not going to win long term. It may work for a minute, but you're not going to win long term because when we create content like that, our spirit, our energy, our blood, our sweat, our tears, our hopes, our dreams, our sacrifices, our compromises 
are going without fucking eating for weeks and days. When you're working on stuff. Because you believe in it. The sacrifices you make. Time with your family. With your mama. With your daddy. With your people. The sacrifices you make. You cannot take someone's work. Steal it. Without their permission. And think it's going to work long term. And I'm just going to leave it there. Give people they, they, they credit. And they check. And things will thrive. Let R&B Divas be that cautionary tale. Because I fought with everything I had for the rights of my show. I was not paid for almost two years on R&B Divas because I decided to walk away. And my contract didn't say when I needed to be paid. It just said I needed to be paid. And then because I started telling the truth, then it was like, oh, we're going to sue you because you out here breaching your contract. You're not supposed to say we treat you like shit. You're not supposed to tell people that. I'm sweating. Feel like a preacher. <laughs> and because I said hell to the no, to the no, 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 I'm not gonna stand back and let nobody piss on me and tell me it's Brandon. I'm a fight. And I fought literally up until the week Maxie died. The day Maxie died was a week before my arbitration. So anything that happened after she died, I don't remember. On that RB Divas case. But I'ma tell you this. The next fight I have, y'all heard me. The next person that comes into my space trying to steal my shit, don't do it. Run me my loot. I'm done. Love y'all. Appreciate y'all. Sorry I couldn't answer no questions. Hope that this transparent moment resonated with some of you. Um, yeah. Blame it on the a a a alcohol. But stop stealing people's shit. And black women, stop being afraid to collaborate. We are the ones that everybody's making money off of. So we might as well be making it together. So go to worthtv.com now and register. Please. That's why I started it. Because the only way that I can change the narrative is to own it and help us own it. That's the only way. And they don't like that. But guess what? I don't give a flying frog leg. Fight for worth. Women in reality TV and film. So all that shit I had to go through brought me to this. From the bottom of foundation, fight for worth. Worthtv.com. I ain't all into it like I could be because I got some other shit, speaking of stealing shit, that I got to deal with. But as soon as this is done, oh, it's a wrap. Movies, TV shows, the only way this content is going to win and provide legacy is if we own it. WorthTV.com. I'm done, y'all. Good night. <laughs>